Hi there, I'm Walt Jaquith, Applications Expert for Imaginet Technologies and Certified Inventor Professional. This is the second video in a series on repairing surface geometry in Inventor. In the first video, I covered the basics and repaired some simple surface issues. In this video, I'll take a look at a part with more complex problems. Let's get started. My part for this example is an imported driveline yoke. The part came in with an error flag on the composite surface. It also looks like the nut, washer, and end of the shaft came in with this surface part. If I go to a wireframe view, we can see that the nut's spiral threads are in there. Besides bloating the file size and slowing down drawing views, that's just asking for trouble in the surface geometry. Fortunately, in this case, I want just the yoke itself, so all that can go. The first steps are similar to the previous part, except that I'm not going to bother trying to stitch it. There's no chance of that working with the error showing. I'll go into the Repair Bodies environment and run the Find Errors tool. Notice that it finds a lot of separate bodies, another potentially bad sign. The routine finds three errors. Two of them are from a filled side surface, one for self-intersecting surfaces, and another that just says modeling uncertainty. There's also a second modeling uncertainty in the spiral threads. A good tip here is to check other similar areas of a model if one area throws an error. Looking at the other three fillet ends, I can see that there's something strange going on there as well. Those areas didn't throw errors, but still may prevent the part from stitching, so I'll need to keep them in mind. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the stuff I don't want using the right-click and delete method. This can get a bit tedious, especially if it's sliced up into a lot of tiny little surfaces, as is likely with the threads. It pays here to be careful and methodical. If you inadvertently get an edge instead of a surface in the selection set, you won't get the delete option. It's also easy to accidentally select a surface you don't want to delete. Deleting the unwanted geometry eliminated an error as well, so I'm making progress. If I zoom in on the other problem spot, we can see the surface folding back on itself. I can select the error by clicking the previous or next error buttons in the repair tool. Doing so gives me a set of options for things to try. The Heal Error button will attempt to resolve the issue by tweaking the geometry within specified limits. This tool does not like a tolerance greater than four thousandths of an inch, and setting it there doesn't heal the geometry. I can heal it with a setting of eight thousandths of an inch. That might be fine, but I don't like the warning I get that things might go south on me later, so I'm going to undo that and try again. I have two other options, simply delete the surface or replace it with a boundary patch. If I delete it, I'm just going to patch it later, so I'll opt to do them both in one step. And it works. Now I have no errors. As we've seen, no error showing doesn't necessarily mean the part will make a solid, so let's see what happens. I'll select the stitch command, select everything, and run the Find Remaining Gaps and Free Edges tool. It finds several issues, with three problem spots centered around the remaining three fillet edges. These two appear to be just edge issues, not actually flaws on the surface. I'll ignore them for now and see if they cause a problem once the rest of the flaws are fixed. I can delete three of the surfaces, which leaves me with some holes that might patch. But this corner has an additional problem. 
there's a sliver that appears to be part of this larger surface. That will need fixing, and there are additional issues as well. The gaps I created by deleting the three bad surfaces are not going to respond to the boundary patch tool because the adjacent surfaces don't terminate neatly at the corners. If I look at the one good fillet corner, its upper edge is broken into separate edges and the lower edge appears to have two overlapping edges. Whether that will give me problems when I try to stitch the part remains to be seen, but at least it does have a surface where I need it. So I still have several problems and the simple solution isn't going to fix them. Fortunately, in this case, just a few more steps will bring the model in line. One of the issues I'm facing here is that I'm not really dealing with Inventor surfaces yet. What I have here is an imported composite. Inventor does not see this as a native object, and so my editing options are limited. The solution is to stitch the model. Even though doing that won't turn it into a solid at this point, it will convert the model into native Inventor surfaces. In this state, my editing tools become much more powerful, and some of the things which have previously failed are much more likely to work. With the part stitched, the boundary patch tool works on the two simple gaps. That leaves the one bad surface to deal with. Patching that gives a strange result, so I'll keep trying. The Boundary Trim and Intersect Faces tool are worth trying, but in this case Inventor apparently doesn't see these two surfaces as intersecting, so neither of them work. One option in this case is to take advantage of the fact that this part is symmetrical on two axes. Since one side of the part is correct, I can go back to the normal part environment, add a work plane up the middle of the geometry, and trim the bad half of the part away. The remaining gaps can then be patched, and the stitch command will then create a solid that I can mirror to complete the part. If the part is not symmetrical, what other options do I have? I'll undo till I'm back to the quilted surface with the bad corner. Then I'll go back to my standard method of deleting the surface. So far so good. Now I'll attempt a boundary patch. Inventor is seeing these two areas as a single gap. The patch looks correct. I suspect it's not identical to the one on the other side, but we already solved that issue for a symmetrical part, so if we're assuming I'm trying to fix an asymmetrical part, this may be close enough. Just to confirm, I'll finish the patch and stitch the part. And I have a solid, even if it's not perfectly true to the original geometry. But what if that solution is not satisfactory because of the inconsistency between the original surface and the boundary patch? Let's back out of that fix and try one more time. What I really need to do is trim that little sliver off of this surface. Then everything should patch correctly. The trim I need is on a nice flat plane, but how do I get there? The answer is a combination of repair environment and normal part environment tools. In the repair environment, I'm going to select the transfer surface tool. This tool can move surfaces between two surface bodies or create a new surface body from the selected surfaces. I want to separate out this surface from the rest of the part, so I'll make sure the Create New Composite option is checked, and select OK. Now I have a new composite surface in the browser, composed of that one surface. To trim the sliver off, I need a surface to trim to. A work plane would be perfect, but I don't have access to work planes in the repair environment so I need to exit out and go to my regular Inventor tools. Now I'll turn off visibility on the larger surface so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to need to stitch the new composite to convert it into a surface I can edit, 
Then I can use the regular surface trim tool to finally get rid of that troublesome sliver. The final steps are to stitch all the existing surfaces, boundary patch the one final gap, and then stitch once again to make the solid part. I still have surfaces with color overrides on them, but the clear appearance overrides command will fix that. To recap, after repairing the faulty geometry, I stitched the part so I could bring Inventor's more powerful surface editing tools to bear. I then used three methods to get it to a solid state. First, because the part was symmetrical, I trimmed the bad half away, created the solid, and then mirrored it. The second method was a variation on the standard delete and patch, assuming that the new patch didn't have to be an exact match for the surface it replaced. In the third, I separated out the offending surface and edited it separately from the rest of the model. Now that I have a solid, there are a couple more things to address with this part. First, the solid is way off of Inventor's origin. This may not be a problem for you, but if you want to clean that up, it's done with the Move Bodies command in the Modify Panel Flyout. You'll need to take measurements for how far the part is from where you want it to be. I'm just jotting those numbers down as I measure them. Then you plug the numbers into the X, Y, and Z fields in the Move Bodies dialog. You can also rotate the solid if you want it in a different orientation. Finally, with the part that I've run so many operations on, I'll definitely want to filter it through a neutral file format as I outlined in the first video. That will give me a clean and lean part file that I can use with confidence. That wraps up this video on advanced surface repair tools in Inventor. I'm Walt Jaquith for Imaginet Technologies. See you next time, and happy modeling!